Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, Mr. President, members of Congress, fellow astronauts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Wilbur Wright once noted that the only bird that could talk was the parrot, and he didn't fly very well. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be brief. <laughs> this, this week, uh, America has been recalling the Apollo program and reliving uh, the memories of those times in which so many of us here, the colleagues here in the first rows, were immersed. Our old astrogeology mentor, Gene Schumann even called in one of his comets to mark the occasion with spectacular Jovian fireworks. And reminding us once again of the power and consequence of celestial extracurricular activities. Many Americans were part of Apollo, about one or two in each thousand citizens all across the country. They were asked by their country to do the impossible, to envisage, to design, and to build a method of breaking the bonds of Earth's gravity, and then sally forth and visit another heavenly body. The principal elements leaving Earth, navigating in space, and descending to a planet unencumbered with runways and traffic controls would include the major requirements necessary for a spacefaring people. Today, a space shuttle flies overhead with an international crew. A number of countries have international space programs. During the space age, we have increased the knowledge of our universe a thousandfold. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you we say we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered. Breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Those challenges are yours. In many fields, not the least of which is space, because there lies human destiny.